All right, it's new product time. New, don't have a new, don't have a do, new song. New song, new. It's All right, new. Yeah. All right you wanted to show this new. thing off, right? Yeah. We what is this thing? This is a little miniature um, wireless keyboard, and we uh, we actually, this isn't new this week. It's back in stock this week. We uh, had these last week, but then they sold out or two weeks ago, and then we didn't really have a chance to show them off. But uh, we just got a shipment in so I can show them off. Uh, Kate, can you go to the overhead? Yes, I can go to the overhead. Okay. I'll go to the overhead, sir. Okay. <laughs> I've gone to the overhead. Okay, so this is a little, it's a little keyboard, and it is kind of small, but you can kind of control with your thumbs, or you can, you can type, especially if you have small fingers. It's got, um, you know, it's got control and alt, and, and it's nearly a full keyboard, and it's got um, a little touch pad with left and right buttons. It also has page up and down, which is good for uh, scrolling. And then um, there's a little wireless. It's not Bluetooth because not everything has Bluetooth. It's a wireless 2.4 gigahertz uh, dongle thing. And the dongle actually, it's kind of cute. It fits at the back, so you can store it in the back. And then um, this is uh, has a built-in lithium-ion battery, and you can recharge it. It comes with a, uh, a little um, charging cable. It's just a mini B, and so you can connect it with a mini B. You can kind of see it. And there's an on-off switch, so now it's on. Is it on? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, you can type, type away. And uh, we've been using it with Raspberry Pi as a kind of a handy, uh, you know, don't have to have the cables connect to the Pi. It can be over there um, type setup. It might be good for like a, you know, remote control system or like if you're using the Pi for like some sort of automation and you don't want to have a keyboard hatch at all times, you can have the keyboard um, remotely and it works like, you know, 10 meters away, 20 meters away. Okay. So I just want to show it off. Okay. It's kind of a nice little baggy too. A little bag comes with it. Yeah. Anyone bag. tried uh, this with a beagle bone? Uh, I haven't tried with a beagle bone, but it, it's it's really like it shows up just as a keyboard and mouse. So yeah. I I am nearly positive it'll work. You know, I if you have a beagle bone, you're willing to try it out, please do. And and uh, if it doesn't work, just contact us and we'll. Yeah. Uh, give you a refund, but I'm positive it'll work. John asked me if I've mounted this to my arm yet. That is more of a fall or winter thing. It's too hot out to be mounting yeah, we keyboards. Yeah, we don't start attaching or gluing keyboards to ourselves until yeah. later on in the year. So, all right, moving right along. Um, we've got um, cables, and um, I'm going to just go to them. Look at yeah. these cables. We have little shorty cables. Um, we got little, they're not six inches, they're, they're actually ten inches altogether because of the, uh, the yeah. connectors add like a couple inches, but uh, the wire is six inches long. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? I was trying to point to each one. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we have um, mini B, micro B, and standard B because, yeah, everything's slightly different. So if you're connecting to your Leonardo, you want the uh, micro cable. If you're connecting to your Teensy, you'll want the mini or uh, mini cable. Yeah. And if you're connecting to your Arduino, you'll want the standard USB cable. So they're just slightly shorter. And we had these specially made to our spec and in Adafruit Black. That's right. We specified this black using Pantone zero 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 zero. That's right. Um, okay. Next, next uh, step. We've got these cute little readers. These are fantastic. Yeah, these are cute, but they're also very good, which I kind of like. So um, this is a really really small. A micro USB card reader, and we carry uh, sorry micro SD card reader, and we carry um, micro SD with SD adapter um, in the store. I'll show this off. So I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, I'll have to zoom no, in. Overhead camera. So we have um, the we like to carry SD cards that are really micro SD and that come with an adapter because that way you can use them um, with anything because like everything either uses SD or micro SD, and it's just like a mechanical connector, so you can like use either one. And then we actually tried a bunch of readers, and we actually like this one the most. And, um, you know, you you know if you don't have an SD card reader, you can just slide this out. And then um, the micro SD actually pops into the back of the reader like that. And you can kind of see it through. And then it connects. And we tried this with, like, every computer, and it was, like, super fast, and it was recognized really easily. And it doesn't use too much power, so it's really good. Um, it has a nice little uh, attacher thingy, so you can connect it to something. I thought this would be really good. So, like, if you had a data logger project or um, or something, or uh, like a wave shield, and you didn't want to, you wanted to make it so you wouldn't, you'd be able to connect, to read off the data, or you wanted to update the data, you would, you could attach this using a little key dongly, whatever, to your project really easily. Um, it's pretty fast. We, we have specs on it, and it's um, micro SD, 
and SDHC and SDXC. So we actually bought a 64 gig micro SDXC card. So it's like, it fits in here, but it's like 64 gigs, which is incredible. And it worked great. It doesn't work under XP because XP doesn't recognize yeah. um, 64 gig flash drive, but it worked under 7, Vista, yeah. Linux, Mac. Yeah. Someone wanted to know if this will work on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We actually use it to, um, to yeah, I mean, it just shows up as a, as a, a, a hard drive. Yeah. Like, it works like any other SD card. So it, it works under any operating system that supports USB mass storage. Yeah. And uh, we've been using this for, like, a couple weeks now. And we like them. It works. Like, it's not, like, I had some SD card readers that were flaky. Like, they would, you'd have to unplug and replug them. This one, we yeah. didn't have any problems like that. Yeah. Anytime we put something in the store, it goes through the, the lady at a test. And um, she personally, you know, uh, we always have a box of things that don't work. And then we eventually get the yeah. one great one um, because we don't want to sell stuff and to our customers and it's not that doesn't expensive. work. It's like six bucks. Yeah. So it's like you know you can add a reader to your project or, or keep yeah. it around. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did get a 64 gigabyte micro SD. I know. Isn't I, that I, weird? You can eat it. Like when that is. I, I, it's interesting. It's, like <laughs> it's, it's so said, tiny. It said on it like you know supports up to 64 gigs. I was like you know what? Like I just don't believe it. Like I wanted yeah. to make sure, so I bought a 64 gig card, and you can see it in the photos. Trust but verify. Okay. Uh, next up, we got some more things here. This is exciting. This is one of my favorite new products that. Um, you like DAX? Yeah. Okay. I like that you. I don't really, I don't really show it off the overhead because it's yeah, really so small. It's, it's basically um, we were looking for a DAC because nothing we carry has analog out, and we actually need to generate a sine wave. Um, and generating a sine wave is kind of a, you can do it with PWM, but we were doing some audio t testing for a future audio project. Uh, which we'll show maybe next week. And um, to do that, we needed to generate a sine wave. And so we were like, well, we need a DAC. And uh, it couldn't be a PWM. It actually had to be true analog output. And so this is a nice little chip from Microchip. It, it was the smallest, lowest cost DAC we could find. It has 12-bit output. And uh, it's X2C. It works really great. So it'll work with like, pretty much any microcontroller. And it's really trivial to use. Like You just write the 12-bit value. And uh, you can send it to EEPROM, too. There's an EEPROM inside. And uh, it just works. So it's really easy, and you can set the address pin to any of two pins, uh, to any of two addresses. Okay. Moving right along. Um, this is my uh, other favorite product that you put in this week. These are so cute, these little displays. Yeah. And you did such a good job on it. They look beautiful. They I work love great. the little LEDs. Yeah. Here's some um, really nice photos of them. They don't and photograph that well. Um uh, it's always hard to um, photograph things that give off their own light source, um, but you, you did a good job. They look good. Yeah. You want to go to the overhead again? Uh, yeah, sure. Can you go there? It's an overhead show night. All overhead, all the time. Look at that. Uh, so, yeah, this is the display here. I'll oh, reset it. So, this is um, an OLED, and it's 1.3 inches diagonal. And they're on sale. And they're on sale. Um, well, we sold, well, we'll be making more. It has four mounting holes. And um, this is actually an interesting design decision because Kevin Townsend and I um, worked on this one. And uh, even though the display has 8-bit parallel, we decided, like, nobody really uses the 8-bit parallel interface. And so we decided to, instead of having all the, the 8 bits available, to just go with um, SPI and I2C, but then do level shifting. So it's fully level shifted, so you can just pop it in and use it I2C or SPI with your favorite microcontroller. And the SPI is, like, super fast. People who have run these on the Netduino like it, like, 400 frames a second or something ridiculous. Um, yeah, and you can see there's text oh, even. Someone wants to know, how does this compare to the other OLEDs we have in terms of size? It's, it's the same. T I mean, you can look at this, the size. Um, we have, uh, I think we have the, the, the dimensions up on how big the display is. It's just the, big, it's the biggest monochrome OLED that's the same chipset. But it's basically all the same chipset and then different sizes. Mm -hmm. So we have a smaller one that's 128 by 64, and then we have two... Uh, 128 by 32s that are SPI or I2C, and then this is the bigger, you know, Big Brother uh, that's, um, as, uh, you know, uh, 128 by 64. Okay, so quick questions. But only monochrome. Uh, back to that uh, DAC. Do we sell that as an SMD part? No. No, but you can get it from DigiKey or Mauser. And then someone wanted to know, are those 0805 passives? Yes, we use 0805 passives. Okay. Uh, next up, um, you already asked uh, about the size on that. Uh, Will you sell the raw OLED in the future? We're thinking about it, but they're so hard to use that I think a lot of people just kind of want, most of the customers that we have kind of just want it to be ready to go. We do sell um, displays raw, but then we often find that it, it can cause problems because people don't realize it doesn't come on a breakout board. So they get it and they're like, oh shoot, like I need, yeah. you know, a Metcal 
to um, solder these on. And, and so we're we're not sure how we're going to do it. We're, we're going to maybe just keep these breakouts in the store and see whether people yeah. ask for the displays. Here's a question you can answer, because I answer this over email or in the forums or on Google Plus or something. Yeah. Why are OLEDs better, one, and I'm going to say it's not always true, um, so I'll even add this part. Why are they better at smaller sizes um, than LCDs, for instance? Um, they're they're good for uh, low power because they o they're only only the, each pixel's lit up and they're also very high contrast. So the black is ultra black because there's no light in, there's no backlight. That's and my favorite color, ultra black. I don't know if okay. you know. Okay. And then another thing, it's hard to see, but it, it, they're good at you know you can show them from any dimension. Like they're they're yeah. visible from any. The viewing angle um, is always nice. Viewing, yeah, from any viewing angle, they look really good. And they're also very very crisp because they don't have any bleed. There's no bleeding effect. Um, they're also often very small, like the OLEDs we have are very small because um, they're crisp, so they're good for small displays. So when you use big dis for big displays, TFTs are cheaper. Yeah. OLEDs are more expensive than TFTs, but TFTs don't look good when they're very small. Only OLEDs look good. So like small displays tend to be OLEDs, and as they get past like about two or three inches diagonals, um, you'll see TFTs because they're full color mm. and they're cheaper, and you know. SPI, by the way. So yeah, yeah, that? this does SPI okay. and SPT. Okay, great. All right. Uh, uh, I'll, show the, I'll show the back of this really I'll fast. I'll show the back of it. Unless we have an image of the back. What does know. OLED stand for? So Organic to... LED. So light, yeah, on the back. Light emitting display. Organic light emitting display. Yeah, diode. Yeah. Oh, not the, the, you're right, oh. diode. Yeah, yeah diode. Display. Um, uh, so yeah, you can see the connector here. It's a 30 pin connector, and then we have regulator and shift circuit tree and all that good stuff, and then we have the 5 volt ready icon right here to tell you that you can pretty much just plug and go. So yeah, that's our display. So this is the last of the uh, SSD 1306 based displays. We actually have like all of them now. That's good. Right on. Okay, and you know, that uh, concludes the new products. New, 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 new products. That was Not it. Not tons of new, but a little yeah, new. Yeah, we got stuff going on.